I'd like to take a moment to apologize in advance to anyone and everyone out there who speaks Slovak because I'm the classical nerd and I'm probably going to butcher the name of Eugene Suhyon. Sukhyun was born in southwestern Slovakia in September 1908. Both his parents were musical, with his mother perhaps the more influential of the two. His first piano lessons came from her. He had outgrown what she could teach him by the time he was 12, and he moved on to continue his studies in Bratislava, now the capital of Slovakia, but then just a major city in the former Czechoslovakia. He studied the piano at the Bratislava School of Music under Friko Kafenda, one of the first composers, if not the first composer, to attempt a Slovakian opera, but he never completed it. When the Bratislava Academy of Music was founded, he moved with his teacher over there, and it's around this point that we can begin to see his interest in composition. After this, he moved on to the Prague Conservatory, where he focused primarily in composition, although he did study conducting during this point, but there's no evidence to suggest that this was ever more than a secondary interest. Most of his works during this period came in the form of solo and chamber pieces. After he finished his studies in Prague, he became a theory professor in Bratislava, where he would eventually also teach composition. This steady gig gave Sukhan ample time to develop his own style, and develop it he did. Like many composers, he used the folk music of his homeland, but there was a lack of Slovakian composers making use of Slovakian material and Slovakian folk song. There was a gap to fill, and he filled it. He used traditional Slovak materials and idioms to great success in ever larger pieces, culminating in this massive sweeping cantata entitled either Psalm of the Carpathians or Psalm of the Subcarpathian Land, depending on what translation you like. This, and his other pieces as well, was seen as a cry against the forces that had kept the Slovakian people from forging their own national identity. His operas The Whirlpool and Svatopluk also take advantage of traditional Slovakian material. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, he taught music education in Bratislava at a college specifically designed for educating educators, before moving posts once again. His last teaching position was as the theory professor at Bratislava University, where he stayed until he retired in the mid-1970s. As the years went by, Sikhon experimented more and more with serial techniques, incorporating more of the 12-tone theories of Schoenberg and his followers, while still never truly losing sight of the folk music and the modalities that got him to that point in his career. He was hailed as a national artist in the 1950s, which indicates that a, either Soviet-era artistic repression wasn't nearly as bad in Czechoslovakia as it was in other parts of the Soviet Union and its satellite countries, or that B, his music was never 12-tone enough for them to bother. Either way, there doesn't seem to be any record of him running into any troubles with the authorities or any record of artistic censorship of his work. His eclectic combination of these two musical worlds, 12-tone serialism and folk music modality, meant that he had an interesting take on harmony, and he even published his chordal theory in 1978, four years after his retirement. He always suffered through periods of sickness, and when he passed away in August 1993, Slovakia lost the last of the first generation of composers to help forge their own unique musical identity. His work spans from short piano pieces to huge operas to everything in between. He was an incredibly well-rounded composer, not only this, but he also wasn't someone who just wrote for the best performers all the time either. He also wrote a lot of music that was just as good, but more simple in style, more accessible to the amateur, because he was a big believer in music education, and this informed the pieces that he wrote as well. Some have even credited him with establishing professional music education in Slovakia, and although it does appear that the infrastructure of such a system was already instantiated, it is true that it was through his efforts that he brought that system to the next level. At the very least, he was one of the major figures in growing and promoting it. Sukhan is rightly credited with helping to establish a distinctly Slovakian form of art music, and despite his prodigious output, he always seemed to put his educational efforts first and foremost. He always seemed to be more interested in what his students were doing than what he himself was up to. And, by all accounts, he was a pleasant and generous man, loved by the Bratislavan locals. 